toward the left corner of the end zone. Kevin makes a nice catch, and the Bucs had the 14-0 early lead. But here come the Jets. Johnny Hector, two-yard burst, 14-7 Tampa Bay. Then, under three minutes later, Kenny O'Brien, what a marvelous day. 22 yards to Wesley Walker, we're tied at 14. Leahy with a field goal. Then early second quarter, Ken O'Brien to tight end Mickey Schuler once for 11 yards to give the Jets a 10-point lead. Ken O'Brien to tight end Mickey Schuler twice for 10 yards to give the Jets a 17-point lead. Then still in the second quarter, Ken O'Brien off the fake to tight end Mickey Schuler a third time. Eight-yard play for a touchdown, 41-21 Jets at the half. In the second half, Tony Page scores to make it 62 points for the Jets as they roll Tampa Bay. We worked hard and uh, we got into the right situations uh, with giving the, the quarterback protection and having the receivers get open. And uh, Joe made a, you know, he made some great calls today. There were a lot of times that, uh, that the plays we called were just what the defense uh, couldn't stop. We just made positive everything that could possibly be done. We put 60 points on the board. We we're on a roll. And it was tough for them. Whatever they try, we seem to be taken advantage of and uh, just happy to get away with the win. The Jet fans hung in there, and all of a sudden the offense was explosive, and they came back, and, you know, we beat them like we did. Uh, it's one of the best feelings after a loss to Miami that uh, you could have the next week. It's difficult. It's, it's very disappointing. We, we've got a lot of talent here. We just haven't been able to, to put it all together like we wanted to. And, but we got five games left, and we just have to keep it going until it's over. So the Jets, 62-28 over Tampa Bay, 35 first downs, almost 600 yards in the process. O'Brien throwing for five TD passes, 367 yards, as Gail mentioned. Jets and Patriots are both 8-3. and three. They meet next Sunday in the Meadowlands. So be there. The Indianapolis Colts have been pretty tough at the Hoosier Dome this year. Jumped out to a 10-0 lead over the Miami Dolphins today. But that was before Dan Marino got the passing attack on track. Marino passing for 330 yards. The Colts fumbling twice deep in Miami territory. The Dolphins over the Colts, 34 to 20. Third quarter tied at 13. Dolphins running back Ron Davenport appears to have been stopped. He was stopped before he got into the end zone. Was ruled a touchdown. Miami took the lead 20 to 13. Then the Dolphins got the ball right back on an onside kick. And Marino with the hot hand hitting the veteran Matt Moore. The 37-yard play all the way down to the one-yard line. That set up a Lorenzo Hampton touchdown. 27-13 Dolphins. Colts come back. Mike Pagel to wide receiver Wayne Capers down the right sideline. He cuts the other way, evades Glenn Blackwood, and heads into the end zone. Cuts back one more time for the score. 80 yards, 27-20, longest play from scrimmage for the Colts in 75. Fourth quarter now, Marino to Ron Davenport. The post pattern, 17-yard touchdown play. And the Miami Dolphins hold off the Patriots. The final uh, was 34-10. Uh, to 10. Hold off the Colts. The final was 34-10. to 10. Marino, 22 of 37 for 330 yards. The Dolphins now 7-4 and four on the season. The Colts drop to 3-8. and eight. Chris? Yeah, well, all of a sudden, the Los Angeles Rams look very, very tentative. The NFC West pace setters shouldn't look this way, but they've dropped three out of their last four and have allowed a surefire division title to go up for grabs now. Today, the Rams were ambushed in Atlanta 30-14, to 14, marking only the second time all year the Falcons have figured out how to win a football game. This play set the tone for the Rams. Dieter Brock was back at quarterback, and he guns to Ron Brown, but Brown is, boom, hit hard right there. Scott Case recovers the fumble for Atlanta. Four turnovers on the day for L.A. This one helped set up a field goal by Mick Luckhurst. Later in the first quarter, Gerald Riggs, three-yard blast, 10 nothing Falcons, Riggs, 123 yards on the day. Atlanta gets help from the officials, just like the last game. Well, you just saw it was uh, Riggs in the end zone. Yeah, a little shaky, but they called it a touchdown, 17 nothing Atlanta. In the fourth quarter, the Rams now a comeback, trailing 23-7. Brock to Ron Brown. All of a sudden, two straight TDs make it 23-14 with nine and a half to go. L.A. is thinking they can do it. But Gerald Riggs salts it away with his third TD blast of the day, making it 30-14, and John Robinson can only wonder what is going on right now as uh, his team has dropped three of the last four. And uh, the Atlanta Falcons, by winning 30-14 today, have won for only the third time in their last 21 games. Not all was good for Atlanta today, however. All-pro tackle Mike Ken, uh, Ken, ligament damage in his knee. He's out for the year. The 49ers failed to pick up any ground on the Rams last week, but they weren't about to let that opportunity go by again this week. Joe Montana running for one score, passing for two more. The Niners handing the Kansas City Chiefs a club record seventh straight loss. The final was 31-3. to 
second quarter of this game, Joe Montana sneaks it in from the one-yard line, and the Niners jump out quickly to a 17-3 lead. The Chiefs could not get anything going, some confusion in the backfield. Bill Kenny is buried by the Niners. John McAvick wondering what has happened to his team this season. Chiefs trailed 17-3 at the half. Third quarter, Montana looking to the end zone, finds Dwight Clark, 22-yard touchdown play, 24-3 Niners out on top. Fourth quarter now, Montana again. Looking over the middle for tight end Russ Francis. Eight-yard touchdown pass, and the Niners roll over the Chiefs, 31-3. to Montana passing for 235 yards. Wendell Tyler rushing for 111. The Niners now 6-5 and five on the season. The Chiefs drop to 3-8. and eight. In other games, it was uh, Lynn Dickey throwing for 302 yards and two touchdowns. The Packers over the Saints, 38-14. to 14. The Saints' sixth straight loss, and it comes after Bum said he must win uh, five of his last six or he should be fired. So the Green Bay Packers look like they're back on the winning track. At the Silverdome, Eric Hippel uh, tosses three touchdown passes, two to David Lewis. The Lions over the Vikings, 41-21. to Lions remain unbeaten at home this year. They are now 6-5. and five. The Vikes drop to 5-6. and six. We will have highlights of that game a little bit later on in the program. And the Eagles defeated the Cards 24-14. to Ernest Jackson, a 51-yard touchdown run. He had 164 yards today. Mike Quick caught a pair of touchdown passes. The Eagles now 6-5. and five. The cards dropped to four and seven. There are only one back of the Cowboys. Uh, Jaworski, by the way, in that game, bruised his right shoulder. He was replaced in the third period by Randall Cunningham. We will have highlights of that have to game. change the rules of the AFC Central race. Usually, it's the first team over 500 that wins that title. But now we actually have somebody at six and five, and I don't think the other three teams want to surrender quite yet. However, the class is starting to show in this division as Pittsburgh employed a hard-hitting defense to win at Houston 30 to seven. First quarter, Warren Moon found out just how hard hitting it is. Makes a nice run. Watch him scoot nicely up the sidelines until, boom, Donnie Shell nails him right here. Moon suffers a hip pointer, did not return. Then it was on the ground for Pittsburgh. Frank Pollard, two-yard run. Second quarter gives the Steelers a 10-0 lead. Pittsburgh put it away in the second half. Walter Abercrombie, nice effort here. Only goes down as a five-yard run, although he ran about 15 yards there. Pollard with 123 yards. Abercrombie with 107 yards as the Steelers win over Houston 30-7, who went most of the way with Oliver Luck at quarterback. Gary Anderson at three field goals. He's now hit 10 in a row for the Steelers in a penalty-marred game. Meanwhile, at Cleveland, the Browns snapped the four-game losing streak, although Buffalo's Booker Moore's first quarter run gave the Bills a 7-3 lead. But late in the third quarter, the Browns' offense, Ernest Biner, had a big day, had 109 yards, including this four-yard TD to give Cleveland a 10-7 lead. And then this, oh, by the way, touchdown with 2-11 to go. Bernie Kozar to who else? Ozzie Newsom, 11 yards, and the Browns then defeated the Buffalo Bills 17-7. We made our adjustments in the second half. A little rocky first half. They're getting good pressure on us and blowing up our running game. But uh, we worked it out in the second half. And I think we did what we had to do to win it. And we had the opportunity to fold and um, to quit and feel sorry for ourselves because a couple things weren't going our way. But we get hung together and came back at the end. We were self-destructing. You know, uh, we get something going. Then uh, somebody will make a mistake here, somebody will make a mistake here, and, you know, stop things again. But, you know, we second half we came out, you know, I guess we just decided that we were going to play some good ball and, and uh, took control. We needed to win that game today. And that we were a better team than Buffalo. You know, we felt like we were a better team. That's why it was a must win. Biner with that 100-yard day. Kevin Mack close to it with 94 yards as the Browns win it by 10. Buffalo has now lost 14 straight road games. And we do not want to forget our Monday night game. The Giants at Washington, a very, very big game in the NFC East. If the Giants win it, they'll be all alone atop the leaderboard. Washington really has to win to stay in a playoff hunt as uh, the Giants have already beaten the Skins. Monday night matchup is... NFL Films, like all the 28 teams, was forced to cut its roster. But tonight, I'm happy to announce that our Monday night matchup lineup will return to its original three-player limit. And Allie and I would like to welcome back Chris Berman. And Chris, we don't have to put anybody on injured reserve to make room for you either. Well, that's big of you, Steve. I've been doing a lot of thinking about Monday nights. And as W.C. Fields once said, on Monday night, on the whole, I'd rather be in Philadelphia. Good to see both of you guys. <laughs> Good to see you, Chris. The Redskins and the Giants are going to see each other for the second time this season. And, Allie, the way it looks is that it's a must game for both teams on different levels. Absolutely. And in this part of the season, it, people start to count down. Let's take ourselves into the locker room of Coach Parcells. Meddling psychological approach is important, right? And he has to say to his players, 
say, forget what we did in the past that's good and that got us here. We are now in a six-game season, no wins. And if we win more of those six games than the other guys in our division, we go to the big dance. On the other hand, we take a little trip over to the other dressing room, and Coach Joe Gibbs this week has a big problem. He's got to say to his players, we are in a six-season framework. Each game is a season onto itself. You must give it your total mental and physical commitment. And even if you're down in the third quarter, fellas, put it in there, because there is no tomorrow. Steve, it seems like the Redskins may be on the critical list. But their vital signs are still strong, though, Chris. They've gained more yards rushing than any team in the NFL. The sickness is in their passing game, specifically the long pass. Joe Theismann has lost the ability to make the big play, and pro football is a game of big plays. Well, the first time the Redskins and Giants met, it was the defenses on both squads that turned into big plays. We'll look at their first meeting in a moment when Monday Night Matchup continues. <laughs> These days, a pro football team usually needs more than 20 points to win a game. But the first time the Giants and Redskins met, the two teams combined for only 20 points. It certainly was a day for the defense. When the Giants last played Washington in Week 7, the Redskins defense put on a better-than-average performance. They held quarterback Phil Simms well below his normal totals and allowed just 17 points the whole afternoon. The Giants' only scores were a field goal a short touchdown run, and this pass from Sims to tight end Mark Bavaro, number 89. So how come Washington lost? Easy. They couldn't protect Joe Theismann. New York defenders held a powwow in the Redskins' backfield wigwam seven different times. In fairness to Theismann, though, he was missing two important injured starters, wide receiver Art Monk and tackle Joe Jacoby. Chris, this uh, reminds me of a sport I saw on late-night cable TV last week, the Australian Dwarf Hurling Championship. I think you did play-by-play -play on that. Uh, we'll <laughs> let that one go, Steve. When Theismann did have protection, though, he moved the club efficiently. Twice, Joe marched the skins on length-of-the-field drives, which put them deep in Giants' territory. He had 22 completions for almost 300 yards. Chris, watch it. You know those statistics. They can't be misleading. I believe a number of those completions came for Joe when the Giants were ahead and they were giving up the shorter passes. In fact, I think a more realistic statistic and a scary one is Joe's interception rate this year. He's had a tough time. A tough time. Allie, if the Giants are as opportunistic and sack-happy against the Redskins tonight, it could be another rough game for Mr. Theismann. Chris, the Redskins seem to be an old team in decline, and the Giants a young one on the way up. And I think the symbol of the Giants' increasing maturity is quarterback Phil Simms. You come in and talk to him. Tom, I always do this to you, Nass. Flow and pros love this. He Joe Theismann, you look at his statistics, and they look like typographical errors. He has 16 interceptions and only seven touchdown passes. Well, it isn't the same Joe that had the other statistics, Steve. And the trouble with Theismann, everybody is saying, hey, he's 36 years old. Has he lost it mentally? Has he lost it physically? That's not really old for a quarterback. No, I happen to have a gentleman, 41 years old, by the name of Charles Connolly, and another gentleman, and uh, about 38 years old, by the name of Y.A. Tittle. Both Looked of like them... he was 60. Oh, yeah. Well, anyway. <laughs> both of them, both of them helping us to win championships. And they were at the top of their physical and mental peak at that time, but very important, they also were at the top of their confidence and concentration level. That's where I think Joe has lost it. And if he doesn't put that together, he also has one other problem. He's throwing that ball late and his receivers are getting beat up. Well, on their offensive game plan, the Redskins usually try and beat up on opponents by keeping the ball on the ground. We've grown to know this. We'll take a look at their game plan. The net matchup continues. <laughs> The Giants have one of the best rushing defenses in the National Football League. Allie, does that mean the Redskins should change their game plan tonight? I would, Chris, but I believe that Joe Gibbs is a member of that coaching sect that says you must establish your running offense to make that offense go. I think you get painted into a corner that way because in the first meeting against the Giants this year, good team against the run, they took the running game away, and therefore they put the Redskins into a position where they had to go to the pass, and they don't have the confidence in that. Against a lesser team like the Lions, where they established a running game, the Redskins went right on to win the ball game. Here you'll see the Redskins executing their most effective running play. 
left guard Russ Grimm, number 68, and left tackle Joe Jacoby, number 66, will pull to the right as the lead blockers for John Riggins. Grimm and Jacoby have the responsibility to lead Riggins around the right end. But as the defense reacts to the block, the first opening shows a little more to the inside, and Riggins follows Jacoby into daylight and the promised land. Successfully run against the line, the Redskins' favorite play was not effective against the Giants' physically stronger, more skillful defensive players. Here you see inside linebackers Gary Reasons, number 55, and Harry Carson, number 53. Watch them react to the Redskin pulling offensive linemen, guard Ken Huff and tackle Mark May. Notice that Reasons and Carson react immediately to the movement of the two linemen. At the same time, Lawrence Taylor, number 56, defeats the attempted block of end Anthony Jones. As George Rogers and his blockers come around, there is no hole inside, no hole outside, and here comes more defensive help. Cornerback Perry Williams, number 23, joins Taylor, Carson, and Reason. Four blue tacklers against two white blockers cuts down running room. And you see the giant defensive motto at work. I'll meet you at the ball. On the next play, another example of an outstanding giant defensive player. As Redskin guard Jeff Bostick, number 53, and tackle Russ Grimm, number 68, pull to the right as lead blockers for John Riggins, you will see that a running alley will open for Riggins to follow his blockers. It looks like daylight, but outside linebacker Byron Hunt, number 57, will defeat his blocker, showing again giant reaction and strength, providing an individual stopper on a play that looked like it would work. This is the plus factor that all outstanding defensive teams have. When you see the Redskin running offense stuffed by that giant defense, you may ask, hey, why should they run these plays too many times? And the answer is simply this. You must run enough plays to pressure those linebackers and defensive linemen to set your passing game up. There's a number of times in football, by the way, where you run a play, and even though it doesn't gain any yardage, it has given you a pressure point. And let's take a look at how the Redskins can do it tonight against the Giants. If the Redskins go to play action passing, and that is faking to Riggins or Rodgers with Theismann dropping back in here, that running action, because they've run the running plays, that running action serves to slow down the pass rush of these defensive linemen on the Giants and also keep these linebackers frozen, respecting that run. Okay, when they respect that run, and as the receivers come up the field, your deep men have to drop to honor them. And as they do that, with the play action fake freezing everybody in here, you notice that big hole that opens for passing to this receiver on this side, or this receiver on this side coming into here, or your tight end coming right through there. And that's the reason why, even though those running plays don't work, you've got to let those linebackers and linemen know, hey, we're coming at you. Now, the Redskins were very effective in the first meeting against the Giants with this type of play action and passes, and we're going to take a look at exactly how they did it. On this play, let's again watch giant inside linebackers Harry Carson and Gary Reason. Their first responsibility is to defend against the run, along with defensive linemen. The Redskins use a running threat, with John Riggins faking a dive up the middle. What this will do will freeze the linebackers as they honor run first. Here you see the fake to Riggins, and notice that linebackers Carson and Reason remain held by the action. As the giant secondary covers the Redskin receivers, the pressure is much greater on them because the linebacker's response to the fake gives the receivers more room to work against that secondary. Once again, play action to pressure the Giants' pass defense. As before, Carson and Reasons will be held by the fake to George Rogers. And we must bear in mind that it's not only linebackers that respond to the play action fakes. Cornerbacks also are affected. They keep one eye on that receiver and one eye on the backfield action. This can temporarily hypnotize a cornerback just long enough to allow Redskin wide receivers Art Monk and Gary Clark to gain that step or two that allows Theismann to get that ball right out in front. 
Tonight, the Redskins must use play-action passes to those good receivers to best match up against a Giants defense that's superior in physical strength and skill. In addition to the tactical matchup of play-action passing, there are three matchups of individual positions that are very vital tonight. Number one, the offensive left tackle of the Redskins, McQuaid, faces Marshall, the defensive end of the Giants, who's leading the lead in sacks, and I think McQuaid won't have any trouble sleeping tonight. He's in for a tough night. And along with that, Donnelly, the Redskins center, has to handle Jim Burt, who I think has not had enough recognition. This, this man happens to be, I think, one of the three best nose guards in the league. Tough night for Donnelly. And then we get to the pass offense. Art Monk has come back to form, and he will pressure the average area of defense on the Giants. Williams and Patterson, and possibly Mark Haynes returning. This is a tough go. Allie, I think the uh, Redskins passing game could be effective tonight because at the beginning of the year, Theismann had no threat, a deep threat at wide receiver. He had Malcolm Barnwell and Calvin Muhammad, and neither one ever understood the system and frequently ran the wrong pattern. But last month, Gary Clark moved into that position, and now he leads the Redskins in receiving yardage and touchdown catches. So Clark is a new weapon for the Redskins, Steve, right. but the Giants have a new weapon on offense. He's Joe Morris, and we'll take a look at how he fits into tonight's scheme of things when Monday Night Matchup continues. There are some special things in this world that only a handful of people can appreciate. Now, maybe you're not one of these people. But if you are, spend some time getting to know Mazda's new RX-7. But I'll warn you, it'll flat spoil you for anything else. Introducing Mazda's new generation RX-7. Its engine has the smoothest flow of power in the world. No one has a more advanced suspension system, and no one offers all this at this price. It's pretty special, like you and me. Now, a new definition of quality and performance. The new Norelco electronic rotor track with the fastest, longest-lasting charge of any leading razor. Inside three floating heads is a patented lift and cut shaving system guaranteed to shave you fast, clean, razor blade close, without a nick or cut or your money back. And a gift she'll love, the new Lady Shave Rechargeable. No, we put quality first. When you're headed for a tricky job, don't take chances with your tools. You're doing it right. Rely on Stanley quality. Doing it right. Stanley accuracy. When everything's riding on precision, you can depend on Stanley. Let's do it! Win a Chevy S10 Blazer and a thousand dollars worth of Stanley tools. Stanley helps you do things right. Look for the great Stanley Blazer Hunt display at participating stores. If you've got your mind all made up about small cars, then you're watching the wrong commercial. But if you'd like to learn about something special, this new Mazda 323 is built on an extra rigid platform to give it the ride of a larger car. It could just change your mind about small cars. Introducing the all-new fuel-injected Mazda 323 Sport Sedan. So refined and so advanced, it's the road car of small cars. But don't listen to me. Drive one. Redskins have been a playoff team the last three years, but here we are, week 11, and they're sitting at 500. Steve, what's happened? Chris, that's the biggest mystery in Washington since the gap on the Watergate tapes. But let me make one thing perfectly clear. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with a Redskin defense. It's as tough as ever. Anchored by massive defensive tackle Dave Butts, number 65, the Redskins defense is ranked second in the NFC. Butts has been controlling the middle of the Washington defense for 11 years, and he still commands and defeats double-team blocking. Against the run, Butts often occupies blockers and protects the linebackers. Here's what I mean. The Eagles' center is supposed to block middle linebacker Neil Olkowitz. However, Butts moves laterally, tying up both the center and guard, leaving Olkowitz unblocked and free to make the tackle. In the Redskins' rushing defense, keeping blockers off the linebackers is important. Dave Butts is a natural at it because his size and strength force an opponent to block him with more than one man. This leaves a linebacker 
a clear path to the ball carrier. Tonight, the Giants can match up against this defensive philosophy with running back Joe Morris, number 20, who has shown that he can run right into where Butts and Olkowitz and all those other bad dudes hang out. Because of Morris's quickness, the Giants offensive linemen can use quick hitting angle blocks against the Redskin linebackers. Cross blocks where the guard, Chris Godfrey, pulls to seal Neil Olkowitz inside, and the center blocks down on Dave Butts have resulted in good gains by Morris. The key to running the ball against Washington is blocking the linebackers. Many times it doesn't even have to be a good block. Just get in their way and change their angle of pursuit. The result often leaves them buried in a pile while Joe Morris turns up field. Morris is the Giants' leading rusher. He rarely breaks the long gainer, but he's explosive. And even when he's surrounded, Morris has the ability to make something out of nothing. Against the Washington Redskins, Morris has packed a lot of contact into many tough short runs. Tonight, these short gains could allow the Giants to control the ball. And that's important because in their last three meetings with the Redskins, the team that controlled the clock won the game. Steve, I believe that Morris is truly outstanding, but I believe the man who is a major sustainer of that offense is Tony Galbraith. He's a guy who catches all of those big third down passes. And by the way, he is the leading all-time receiver of running backs of the NFL, in the history of the NFL. Yeah, pretty good. If I were the Redskins tonight, on third down when Galbraith is in there, I know I've got to treat him as a wide receiver and cover him with a secondary man who's much more agile and swifter than the linebackers. Allie, you know, the Redskins have their own version of Tony Galbraith. His name is Keith Griffin, and he's taken over the role that Joe Washington used to play. Uh, watch for him coming out of the backfield to make drive sustaining catches and I think he's going to be a challenging matchup for those giant linebackers because Ali he's much quicker and he's more elusive than either Rogers or Riggins. Could well be but I think Galbraith gets a little favorable position. His quarterback Sims will be throwing from an upright position better angle. Griffin's uh, quarterback Theismann he may be throwing from down there on his back, and that's a tough <laughs> angle. Well, I've done you all a favor this week because I'm going to take the pressure off your backs. I know the SOS call went out for me. You need some help on the predictions. We'll be back with our fearless and hopefully peerless predictions in just a moment. Don't tell me you know about turbos until you go have some fun with this little puppy. The turbo on Mazda's new 626 GT is a new design that lights up at low RPMs and stays lit. Well, maybe you're not ready for this much fun. Introducing Mazda's new 626 GT Turbo. Zero to 60 in 8.1, top speed 119, and a price thousands less than you'd expect for this level of performance. Careful now, this one's mine. General asks, are you buying yesterday's technology? Data General, computer systems so advanced, we win more major contracts than any other company. Data General. One of the reasons the Giants are 7-3 and three and the Redskins are only 5-5 five and five is that, Allie, the Giants have been a lot more resilient this season. Absolutely. Maturity, and they've proven to themselves that they can have a bad first half play poorly in the third quarter, but still come on to win. However, the Redskins, on the other hand, if they have a bad first half and are doing poorly in the third quarter, they have found they do nothing but lose, and that's a terrible pressure to have in that third quarter. I think the major fact for that is that there are just too many proven veterans who have lost that sustaining ability. Speaking of, I hate to do it, but speaking of proven veterans that may have lost their sustaining ability, your pick, Mr. Siggs. You know, another remark like that, and I'm going to put I know, you back I'm on the waiver wire, you know. <laughs> But Craig, 
Chris, I think that Washington is going to win, and I think they're going to play a Casper Weinberger brand of football. Ooh. Conservative, power-oriented, with a heavy emphasis on defense. Is it my turn? Are you both You're looking at me? That's right. <laughs> okay. You get to look at the Pentagon. I'm, gonna, I'm still going to go against that Monday night home team winning kind of a thing. I believe the Giants will win. And the reason is this. They have the pass receivers and a passing attack that hurts the Redskins where they are softest, and that's in the secondary. And along with that, if Gibbs stays with that running offense principle, the Giants are going to take that away. I think the score, well, I'll wait and see if you know. I, I think the roll. score is going to be 21 to 10. You're supposed to go the other way in a divisional matchup. For example, Giants win the first time. You're supposed to look at Washington the next time. I just think the Giants are a team that's going places. I agree with the Alley and the Redskins have run to the end of the line. I'll take Giants 20 and the Redskins 14, and we'll buck that Monday night home team tied as well. It's great to be back. Thanks for watching. For Ali Sherman and Steve Stable, I'm Chris Berman. We'll see you next week. Monday Night Matchup was brought to you by Mazda, maker of the new generation RX-7, the 626, 323, and B2000 trucks. The more you look, the more you like Mazda value. Divisional title will be out the window. They would be three games behind the Giants with five games remaining on their schedule. But a win, and they move into a tie with Philadelphia at six and five. Then the Redskins would only be one game behind the Giants and the Dallas Cowboys, and they would be back in it. exclusive is brought to you by Buick and your Buick dealers. For comfort, innovation, and a real commitment to quality, it's today's Buick. By Rich Smooth Meisterbrow, the beer that only tastes expensive. By McDonald's, it's a good time for the great taste of McDonald's. And by Honda All-Terrain Vehicle. Honda, follow the leader. Gifford and welcome to RFK Stadium where we have the 147th consecutive sellout this stadium has known. They love their football here in the nation's capital. I mentioned this has been a bitter rivalry over the years. Over the past 15 years, the Redskins, however, have won 21 times. The Giants have won nine, and the Giants have won the last two, both of those wins coming at home. During the 70s, the Giants fans really learned to hate the Washington Redskins, mainly because George Allen kept beating them over and over. I don't think the Redskins even knew there was a rivalry because they just kept winning so many football games. But it's been that kind of a series, and now all of a sudden, the Redskins are down. They've won the division twice over the past three years. They've been to the Super Bowl two out of the last three years. But they are down and they are struggling right now and the Giants are coming on. Phil Sims, the quarterback of the Giants, is having a really fine year. Meanwhile, Joe Theismann, who set an NFL scoring record as a quarterback of this Redskins team in 1983 with 541 points, taking them to two Super Bowls in three years, is really having a tough year. Seven touchdowns, 16 interceptions. They've attacked him in the media. They've attacked him on the street. They have attacked everything from Joe's personal life, his much publicized romance with Kathy Lee Crosby, to the way he's playing on the football field. And to get an idea of what it's all about, a man who has been attacked for his personal life, a man who has been attacked for what he's done in the football field, who better to tell us the trials and tribulations that Joe's going through than Joe Namath? Tell us a little bit about the struggle he's having, Joe. Well, Frank, I can tell you right now, it's not fun at all. Heck, your friends don't talk to you anymore. They don't smile at you. Your food tastes lousy. Your girlfriend or your wife doesn't look as good as she used to. I mean, things are really bad. Joe Seidman is not over the hill. I think he's got a couple of 
years left in him. I've been watching him pass the football. He still throws it accurately and sharply. So I think he can do the job. What the problem is, sure, Washington has a rushing attack. Everyone knows it, but there are some teams in this NFL you cannot run the football on consistent, consistently, and that's been Washington's problem. They have to pass the football when it's not expected. To win this game tonight, they're going to have to pass the football early against the Giants. Otherwise, it's curtains for them. Now, here's the juice on the Giants. Well, still the key to beating this Washington team is you got to stop them from running the football, Joe. And uh, they currently lead the NFL in rushing the football. But the last time these two teams played, the Giants held up to just 69 yards total rushing the offense. Now, you know, look for the Giants to try to do things on defense and offensively. They're going to be somewhat conservatively. What they're going to do is try to run Joe Morris. And then if they get in a little trouble, they have one of the more underrated arms in football in Phil Sims. Key matchup tonight. Look for number 68, Russ Grimm. He's an all-pro guard. He'll be playing tackle tonight because of the injury to Joe Jacoby. He'll be going up against Leonard Marshall, who came into this weekend the league's leading sacker. Frank Gifford, it should be a very, very interesting matchup. It should. The Giants would love to win here at RFK Stadium. The Giants will be kicking off to the Redskins on our right. Deep for the Redskins, Ken Jenkins is back. Eric Schubert, already a legend to Giants fans, puts one up high, hangs it to the five-yard line, and Jenkins will bring it up. Big opening on the left side for Jenkins, and he turns it up past the 35-yard line, taken out of bounds there. Hustling down was Lawrence Taylor, who comes down on that special team kickoff unit of the Giants. There is Sizen. We talked about him a moment ago. Look at the interception. They have had a troublesome time here this season. These Washington Redskins, they haven't done it in bunches. They lose one, they win two, they lose two, they win one, they lose two. But nobody has quite come up with the solution. There have been many changes in personnel. We'll talk about that throughout the course of the game. Meanwhile, first and ten, the setback is John Reagan, big number 44. They'll work him to the left on the first offensive play of scrimmage tonight. Reagan works for about three to bring up second down and seven. Let's take a look at the defensive unit. The Giants will have changed considerably situationally, of course, as all teams do today. Casey Mara will work in. Good pass rusher, as will George Martin. And still not back in the lineup is three-time full bowler Mark Haynes. Elvis Patterson over the left cornerback. Still doing a fine job. And Mark Haynes, who will probably see more action tonight, however, is not starting. Reagan. The single setback once again. Muck is in motion. On second and seven, five minutes back. And firing two Reagans on a little circle pattern. He gets maybe a yard out of that. Nailed by Harry Carson, the inside linebacker of the Giants. It'll be third down and six. And Reagans does not do that very often. He is not one of your prime receivers, and who would know better than his former teammate, Joe Namath. Yeah, John has a good pair of hands. They just don't throw him the ball very often. Now, this is the exact kind of situation we're trying to avoid if you're a Washington Redskins offensive player. It's third down and long. You have to stay out of those situations. Throw the ball on first down. The ball resting just over the 40-yard line. Feisman with Monk to the right. Tries to get the screen off. He does. He goes for Griffin. But Griffin is hit. And hit from behind, Casey Merrill came in on the pass rush, flipped back out to the outside, and was able to make the stop short of the first down near the 43-yard line. So the Redskins, with their first offensive possession, bring out their punter. And a good one he has turned out to be. They picked him up after the third game of the year when they lost Jeff Hayes against the Chicago Bears. You're looking at Steve Cox, and you're looking downfield to Phil McConkey. 9.9 on his return average. the pass that's taken downfield by Raphael Carey, who will be starting tonight as a safety, but the rookie former quarterback gets the pass. It was almost messed up by a bad snap from Jeff Bossy. I'm sure the play was called. It bounces right in front of Cox. He goes through with the fake. Now he lost one up there that Carey almost had to call for a fair catch to make the catch. <laughs> But he gets the first down, and the Redskins with a trick play on their very first fourth down and punting situation have a first down at the Giants' 46-yard line. Play action to Riggins, and Theismann is back. He wants a deep one. Man is open, and Theismann underthrows. Munt had gotten behind Elvis Patterson. Theismann underthrew, and already the Boo Birds are out. That was a bad 
that underthrow. He had him beaten severely here. You see, he has him beaten by two or three yards. Joe really made a poor pass. I think he just threw it too late. That's the reason it didn't get downfield far enough. He was there, and perhaps Joe dallied with his play action with John Reagan just a moment too long. Had he been able to release it a little quicker, that would have been six. Gary Clark, of James Madison, moves to the left as wide receiver. He's number 84, Arden on top of your screen. Number 81, second down and 10. Reagan tries to work left, and down he goes. Perry Williams, the cornerback, was right up at the line of scrimmage, and he nails him right there. There's Raphael Cherry, who will start at strong safety tonight for an injured Tony Peters, and will try to delineate all of the Redskins' injuries defensively because they have a bunch of them. Joe Gibbs in the middle of that. There he is with the headset. Came in 81 from San Diego, and he's been so successful. Two Super Bowl trips in the last three years. But what a struggle it's been this year. Third and ten. Keith Griffin, number 35, works well out of the backfield as a receiver. Fives him back again. Rice is a shot that's complete to Munch. And he'll have first down yardage inside the 35, near the 34-yard line. Art Munch, by the way, did not play four weeks ago when the Giants defeated these Redskins 17-3 up in New York. However, he can be one of the most explosive receivers in football. And when you get that type of time to throw, you're going to complete a lot of passes. I, I was keeping my eye on Russ Grimm on that play. As I mentioned before, he's an all-pro guard who's going out to tackle. And he, he's probably a little quicker than Joe Jacoby was. And he's done thus far a pretty good job on Leonard Marshall, who's having his best year. First 10. Good body right. And Riggin hit at the line of scrimmage. Maybe squeezes out a yard in the arms of Curtis McGriff. We'll bring up second down and nine. Riggins for the season. Just under 600 yards rushing. Six touchdowns. Doesn't work much during the week because of a back problem that he's had for the past couple of years. Only worked this past week on Friday and Saturdays. As we look at Bill Parcells, who perhaps many of you don't know that much about, we'll try to tell you a little bit about him because you may be hearing a lot about him for the rest of the season and into the playoffs. Second and nine. Did you in motion? Seismic takes a little bit off it, and he hits Monk underneath, close to the 30-yard line. Only a gain of about three. It'll be third down and six. Again, those are the kind of passing situations you want to try to avoid the long, long yardage situations. I don't think these Redskins are going to be able to make a living on the ground tonight. The Giants shut them down the last time they played in New York. So I really would like to see them throwing the ball more often. And two have been getting the best protection in the world and that's one of the reasons he has a lot, a lot of interceptions at this point. They've been behind, they've had to play catch-up football, the other teams knew it and they put pressure on him and he's had the problems with the interception, that's the reason. And Theismann, oh, called a quick timeout, he was going to go on a quick count when he called timeout, that could have almost been called a, a fumble snap, but Theismann quickly had the arms up there, Martin quickly covered the football, but Theismann gets the timeout. Parcells is, well, he's not sure he likes that at all. <laughs> you know, that's something a quarterback has to be very careful of. I'm surprised Joe almost made the mistake. If he has the count, if the snap count is on the first sound, he better get up there and know that. And the first sound he makes, the center's going to snap the ball. So he better get away from the center. <laughs> no score, 9-19 remaining in the first quarter. The Redskins on the move. They have the ball inside the Giants' 31-yard line, third down and six. Keith Griffin, number 35. He works well out of the backfield as Monk moves in motion. Drills a shot, and it goes to Gary Clark. The rookie in the NFL comes down with the football for a 15-yard pickup, and the Redskins keeps the drive alive to the 15-yard line. He simply runs it down and in pattern. He has the cornerback already behind him in the chase position. Kennard nearly makes a fine interception here at Kenny Hill. He gets there just a little bit late, and I want to tell you, Seidman had some heat on that pass. But a surprise find has been Gary Clark. He played a couple of years in the USFL with Jacksonville. He came from James Madison, a little college in Virginia. That was his 40th reception, however, the season, and there's movement and contact made. The Redskins, Ken Huff, is saying the Giants 
had made the initial move. Our referee tonight is Fred Wyant. We didn't need to tell you the preliminary call was against the Giants. Encroachment number 64. Jim Burt, the okay. nose tackle, moves across. And the Redskins will have a first down and five, and they'll mark it just outside the Giants' 10-yard line. Giants 7-3, and three, a win tonight. There'll be one game ahead of the Dallas Cowboys. There'll be three ahead of the Washington Redskins, two ahead of Philadelphia. And it will be their fifth consecutive win. Play action again to Reagan. Dyson. Warren, the tight end. Diving into the end zone, and the Redskins, who moments ago, back near their own 40-yard line, on a fourth down punting situation, got the first down. With a shot from Th to Theismann. They bring it down all the way. They go in front seven to nothing or six at this point. This is a busted coverage. They have Lawrence Taylor on the outside and a wide receiver. He didn't know where to go. He went downfield and left Warren wide open. Mark Mosley to the uprights. And the Redskins are on the scoreboard first. They lead the Giants seven to nothing. 22 remaining in the first quarter and the veteran from San Diego State with his 12th reception of the year has put the Washington Redskins out in front 7 to nothing. You saw John Riggins puffing on a little oxygen there. It's very warm, kind of sticky if you will. The temperature in the 70s in the Washington area here today and in the middle 50s at the moment. Steve Cox hangs it up high for George Adams, the rookie from Kentucky and he bothers it. Adams, who has been troubled all year long handling the football, fumbles the ball near the 10-yard line. And out comes Phil Sims for his first opportunity tonight. Thus far on the year, Phil Sims, third, rated in the NFC after 10 games behind the man of Montana. So on 12 interceptions, he has 14 touchdowns. If there is one thing to fault about Phil Sims, it's his competitiveness. He will hang in there and hang in there, trying to win almost on every play himself. On first down, this is Morris, and he is backed up. Raphael Sherry starting for Tony Peters, a strong safety tonight, was up there initially to make the contact. And there is a loss of a couple of yards on that. As we look at the defensive unit, Neil Okowitz in the middle is trying to go tonight. He has a severely test and uh, some of the inflammation has gone down into his right arm now he has come out of the lineup so Monty Coleman moves over to take the place of Rich Malott on the outside Malott goes to the middle linebacking spot Malott wears number 57 <laughs> Morris finds a little bit of a gap and gets back to the original line of scrimmage but it'll be third down and ten the Giants deep in their own territory all right Joe He's off to a good start. I didn't like the pass he underthrew, and I know he didn't like it, but he sure didn't make a man. Well, actually, this game has started off somewhat typically for these two teams. The Giants have been, I mean, the Redskins have been the best team in football on opening drives this year. On their 10 previous opening drives, they have four touchdowns and three field goals. Number 30, Tony Galbraith is in the lineup. Giants who use Galbraith like the Redskins use Keith Griffin as a receiver out of the backfield. It's third and 10, and 10 will be sacked. Was he hit in the end zone and taken into the end zone? There still is no indication of the safety. He was hit about the two-yard line. And we told you it was a bitter rivalry, and both benches are empty. We still have not received an official indication. Sims was hit about the two-yard line, driven into the end zone. The Redskins took the football out of his hands. It'll be fourth down. Near the one-yard line, that's where they mark it. It was Mel Kaufman on the blitz who got to Sims first. But Sean Landetta, who has kicked well for the Giants this year, with a 45-yard average, hangs it up for Ken Jenkins, who takes it at the 39-yard line. And so the Redskins will have great field position once again. They'll be at the Giants' 30-yard line. A 39-yard hurry punt by Landetta. Jenkins brings back another 10 yards. 
And now Joe Theismann comes onto the field as his counterpart on the sideline, Phil Sims, is wondering what happened. I knew we had him picked up. <laughs> you know, football's a game of emotions, and right now it looks like the Redskins are out after this game. It looks like they want it worse than the Giants. First and ten, the Redskins. Riggins trying to work the middle. And perhaps two yards. It'll be second down and eight. Eisman, again, he has been really attacked, both on the streets and by the media. In 83, he was second rated in the NFL. 97% was his rating. He had 29 touchdowns last year. He went to 24 touchdowns and 13 interceptions. This year he's passing at 55%, seven touchdowns, 16 interceptions. He looks over a second and eight. Riggins on a funny looking little draw that did not fool Leonard Marshall. And Riggins has dropped back at the original line of scrimmage, the 30 yard line, it'll be third and 10. Well, those type of plays are designed to take advantage of the, of the quick pursuing uh, tendencies of a guy like a Leonard Marshall and a Lawrence Taylor. They tried to uh, make the play appear to go the other way, hoping those guys would pursue and they would counter with Riggins coming back. But those guys stayed at home and played their positions uh, the way they were taught to play. But Trey, I just saw Griffin come on the field. What this Washington team really misses is Joe Washington. And, of course, they use Griffin as they use Joe Washington over the past few years. He's now in Atlanta. Theismann in trouble. Theismann will go down, and that is the 13th and a half sack by Leonard Marshall, the NFL leader in that department who had not had a sack over the past three games. And what that sack did is move Mark Mosley out of field goal position. Well, I hate to see that. You don't expect that from a veteran quarterback, but Joe Theismann's trying to win so badly right now. He's trying to make things happen. That time he made a very bad play. He should have thrown the ball away. Steve Cox is on to do the punting, and here is Phil McConkey. Young in NFL years, but he had to serve four years after graduating from the Naval Academy before joining the Giants as a free agent in 83, and then the Navy recalled him for another year. So he actually was a rookie a year ago. He's back for the Giants. High kick. McConkey will let go into the end zone by a wide margin. And I know that Steve Cox did not like that one. He wanted to hang it somewhere inside the 10, get the coverage for the Giants. Had a bit of a breather. They have a first and 10 at their 20. Tonight, and unless you've been circling the moon, you know the people who live here, the president, Mrs. Reagan, are in Geneva where... The talks will begin tomorrow. Meanwhile, at RFK Stadium, 434, remaining in the first quarter, the Redskins leading the Giants, 7 to nothing. The Giants, first and 10 from their own 20-yard line. Bill Sims trying to get deep. Oh. Williams, and a flag goes down. Williams oh. representing the speed of the Giants, working against Vernon Dean, and has drawn the flag. You know, if they uh, say this is a judgment call, the receiver can either get to the ball or not get to it. Hey, I don't see how they could call this a penalty. That ball was way over his head. Fred Wyant. Pass interference, number 32, first down. Apparently, the official did not think so. Vernon Dean is called. Top of your screen is Byron Williams. He is the speed on the outside for the Giants. at the 44-yard line. What set that last play up was the all-out blitz Washington came with. They did it in the first series of downs, and they did it this last down on first down. And again, good pickup on the part of the Giants back to the end. Morris. Big open goal. Morris is gone. Joe Morris. 55-yard touchdown sprint over the left side. to change positions with Malak and Monty Coleman. Let's look at it again. The first time the Giants have scored a touchdown in the first quarter this season and the first time the Redskins have allowed one in this season. And suddenly this game is one point from being tied. Joe Morris off on a big year. Eric Schubert, Ty 
ties it up at seven. As Joe Moore explodes for 55 yards and a giant touchdown. The former Syracuse star. 85, when Washington hosted St. Louis, Redskins John Riggins and George Rogers each rushed for 100 yards. It was the first time in the franchise's 54-year history that two Redskins each gained 100 yards rushing. With the Redskins 54 years to get a couple of backs could rush for 100 yards in the game. They did it a second time only four weeks ago against Atlanta. Keith Griffin and George Rogers both going over 100 yards in a big day against Atlanta. Schubert kicks off. Ken Jenkins is back, and this is what, is what they like about Schubert. He keeps Jenkins deep in the end zone, so the Redskins will have to settle for the 20-yard line. There is Joe Morris. Interesting stat, hard to believe, really. He is the first Giants running back this season to have a run of 20 yards or more. Bill Sims has had a couple of them, but not a Giant running back has been able to negotiate more than 20 yards. And they've been looking for that type of runner. They started him uh, after eight games last year, and he's really been getting the job done. May be the first giant runner to go over 1,000 yards since Ron Johnson, and that's some 12, 13 years ago. George Rogers is the running back now, the setback for the Washington Redskins on first and 10. Seismic in and out of the hands of Didier. Didier, ordinarily very sure-handed. It'll be second down and 10. Saturday, CFA College Football presents one of the nation's classic rivalries, and it really is, when the second-ranked Nebraska Cornhuskers with the country's number one rushing attack get it on with the Big 8 powerhouse, third-ranked Oklahoma. Now, they have the nation's best defense. CFA coverage begins live at 3 o'clock Eastern with college football today, Saturday, right here on ABC. Nebraska averaging over 395 yards on offense. Good game coming here Saturday. Second and 10. Seisman. Looks for Muck, he's not open. Looks over the middle of the tight end, Didier. He overthrows Didier by at least three or four yards. He wanted to go to Muck. Muck was well covered by Perry Williams. He checked off to Didier and overthrew by a wide margin. That was a good read by Joe, but it was a bad pass. It's interesting looking at the Redskins right now, Joe. You said they came out, they seemed like the team that was fired up. One score by the Giants, and they appear to be somewhat flat. <laughs> Seisman, 6 of 9, 43 yards. He has the one touchdown. He looks over a third and 10. Seisman, nailed at the line of scrimmage. Jerome Sally makes the stop for the Giants. He didn't throw to him. They had good protection that time, but it's a good chance he didn't see him. Steve Cox to punt. Phil McConkey is in a good position to give the Giants good field position again. He's at his own 35. Cox hangs it up. McConkey steps up to the 37. And McConkey out to the 44 yard line. So the Giants will have a first and 10. You're tied to seven with 325 remaining in the first quarter. Six to four, and of course the 49ers with a Los Angeles Ram loss yesterday are right back in it. First and ten Giants. Sims gets it off as he was going down. He was hit by Dexter Manley. He gets it off to Morris, and they could have called Sims in the arms of Dexter Manley, and they're going to bring that one back. That rule, of course, put in a couple of years ago to protect the quarterback. And a big, strong quarterback like Phil Sims sometimes will get that pass off. It's also one of the reasons that he has fumbled 12 times this year. He'll just stand right in there. Watch 72. Yeah, and talking with Coach Parcells today, that's exactly what he said. Phil's such a competitor, and he wants to make a play where he'll look downfield and hold on to the ball a long time. That led to some fumbles. Second and 19. Joe Morris, left side. Gain of a yard, perhaps two. It'll be third in long yardage. Okowitz in and out of the game. Long yardage now for the Giants. The last time they had third and long, deep in their own territory, the Redskins brought a full blitz on them, and they were able to sack Phil Sims with the one-yard line.
The pass to the crowd, getting into it. Down goes Sims again, and again it's now Kaufman. He was the one who sacked Sims earlier back at the one-yard line. The second sack now for Mel Kaufman. And the Giants bring on the punter, John Landetta. Watch 55. Nobody took a good shot at him. Stepping up, trying to make the block was Tony Galbraith. Not a good block, and Kaufman just kind of was surprised, I believe, that he wasn't blocked better than that. Yeah, Kaufman's moving around that defensive line. But I was really surprised at Tony Galbraith's effort there. That was a sloppy-looking block attempt. Landetta with a beautiful punt, a towering, booming punt that forced the fair catch by Jenkins all the way back at the 23-yard line. That was a 50-yard effort, and Jenkins had no chance whatsoever. He looked at it as the ball peaked out and gave the fair catch sign right then. I agree with you, Joe, on that effort by Tony Galbert. Normally, a uh, back is trying to block some guy who is 10, 20 pounds heavier than they are. In this case, uh, Galbert weighs about 10 pounds more than Kaufman. Historically, he's been a good blocker. He ducked his head that time, and that's why I missed him. On first down, George Rogers looked outside, turned back inside, works to the 28-yard line, a gain of about five before he's hit by Leonard Marshall. That'll be second down and five, Redskins. George Rogers, of course, Heisman Award winner. Back in 1980 in South Carolina, traded by Bum Phillips when he decided to go full-time with Earl Campbell this season. Second and five. Underneath the smut. And taken from behind by Gary Reason. But he has the first down at the 35-yard line. We're tied at seven with one minute remaining in the first quarter. In a game that the Redskins have admitted they feel they must win if they are going to have playoff hopes this year. They could back in as a wild card, but the visual hopes would be pretty much dissipated if they lose tonight. They would fall three games back of the Giants in the Eastern Division of the NFC. On first and ten. Heisman again with a lot of time, but no receiver. Has one right in front of him. And chased out of bounds. Up near first down yardage by Carl Banks. Now, Joe, you got to tell me, does that mean he's not focusing? I know when I got a little older as a quarterback, and I don't want to harp on his age, but you reach a point as a runner where you see what you want to do, but you just can't get there. Now, what's this with a quarterback? Well, that time with Joe, I don't know what his problem was. He had a receiver open on this side and a receiver on the other side. I mentioned the last series that obviously he didn't see the open receiver. That's exactly what happened here. Why he didn't see him, I don't know. Didier was wide open for the first down. And he was right in the path of Joe Tyson. Joe decided to run. He came up a yard short of the first down. It's second down and one. Upended is George Rogers. He should have the first down, depending upon the mark. Curtis Grip came underneath George Rogers. But by the way, that's, that's the most booing I've heard for a nine-yard gain in a long time. I've run up Joe Sizen. They mark it inside the 45-yard line. That mark draws the attention of the crowd, but it's short of the first down by about a foot. And the Redskins will not get a playoff before the first quarter expires. After one, it's the Giants seven, the Redskins. A beautiful city and certainly a beautiful city on a night like tonight when it's so clear and from a camera we have located in the Washington Monument this is the Jefferson Memorial again almost end in summer weather here mid-November this ABC Sports exclusive is being brought to you by Pontiac America's road car company Pontiac we build excitement we begin the second quarter the Redskins with the third down and short about a foot to go for the first near their own 45-yard line, and we are tied at seven, the Giants and the Redskins. Riggins, an extra effort will get the first down for Riggins. He was hit short of the first down, and he surges out over the 45 for a Redskins first down. And 
if it wasn't for uh, John's ability to get those key third downs, uh, four first downs like that in short yardage, I think he's as good as anybody who's ever played this game doing it. He and Larry Zonka are the best two that I've ever seen. I don't think that they would, uh, you know, be playing him so much. Reagan's, of course, now fourth all-time in rushing in the NFL. Sorry about that, O.J. Passed you <laughs> last Sunday. The move behind Peyton, Jim Brown, and Franco Harris. First and ten, Reagan, Lee Flecker, back to Fison. Fison's in a lot of trouble. And it was Lawrence Taylor who slammed Fison to the ground at the 42-yard line. The blitz was on. That's not necessarily a good play to have called. And quickly, Lawrence Taylor was up saying Fison is hurt. And I don't believe Lawrence Taylor would have reacted that way unless Fison is really hurt. He slammed him to the natural surface here. The blitz was on. That is not a good call to have with the blitz on. Seisman had no chance at all to get downfield with it. Let's take a look at it with our reverse angle camera. He's looking deep, but he knows he's in trouble. Lawrence Taylor, number 56, right there. Carson is number 53. But it's Taylor over Carson, oh, oh. slamming. Oh. And you see the oh. right knee, the right foot. Or the ankle. And I <laughs> knew that something was really bad when Lawrence Taylor leaped to the waist on ABC's Monday Night Football. We will not speculate on the extent of the injury to Joe Theismann until we get the definitive word. But while we were away at the commercial, we took a close shot as they looked at Joe Theismann. There was blood on the right shin bone. And again, we'll look at it with the reverse angle one more time. And I suggest if your stomach is weak, you just don't watch. Number 56 is Lawrence Taylor. He makes the sack. Theismann's right leg, unfortunately, was caught under Lawrence Taylor. And I'm sure that the word will be coming up very shortly that Theismann's season is over. And hopefully the injury will not be as severe as we think it probably is. Immediately after Taylor made the sack, he leaped to his feet, beckoned quickly over to the Redskins bench, and here he is. No football player likes to have that happen, particularly Lawrence Taylor. He plays this game as clean as anyone can play it. He is visibly upset. That's the nature of this game. It does happen. It's interesting. No matter what you feel about a player, I saw Coach Parcells come out on the field when you see a competitor like Joe Theismann injured, especially uh, this severely. I don't think anyone feels good about it. Say what they want about Joe Theismann. I've seen Joe Theismann take a timeout after having his teeth knocked out against the Giants, come back in, finish the game, and put on one of the great performances I've ever seen. Over his career, 12 with the Redskins, four up in the Canadian Football League, a near Heisman Award winner at Notre Dame, Joe Theismann has been one of the gutsy players ever to play this game, and you can see Lawrence Taylor visibly upset. Again, only speculation, but I have a feeling Lawrence Taylor heard the snap of the phone in Theismann's right leg. All three of us have been out there. We have heard it. And it is a sickening part of this game. We will get the definitive word from the medical staff of the Washington Redskins. And we look once again at Joe Theismann. Right now, one would have to speculate. A little bit in shock. And being ever so careful. Joe, oddly enough, is one of the most durable players ever to play this game. He came to the Redskins back in 74 after the Redskins acquired his rights from Miami, trading a number one draft pick. George Allen did that. He couldn't take the job away from Sonny Jurgensen and then Bill Kilmer, so he demanded that he play, and he wound up returning punts until he became a starter back in 1978. They were booing a short while ago, and now there's an ovation for Joe Theismann, who I'm sure has played his last play for the 1985 season. Joe's given him a lot of great games here in Washington and around this country. I just hope it's not his last play in football. There is no going to the locker room. I am quite certain that Joe Theismann will be taken to an ambulance, taken to a nearby hospital, and we'll have the report as quickly as we can get it to. Meanwhile, 
for the Redskins. Tied with the Giants with seven, early going in the second quarter. They bring in Jay Schrader, second-year man out of UCLA, third-round draft pick a year ago, played not a play last year, has seen little action this year. He's four of eight, no touchdowns, and one interception. He was a great baseball player and a great athlete at UCLA. He hands off to Keith Griffin, and Griffin. Neal at the line of scrimmage, gets up for a gain of a couple of the third down and 12. And a camera on the outside gives you another view of Joe Tyson. You know, talking about Jay Schrader now, he, he's in there. And he's going to have a tough time tonight. A backup quarterback in the NFL doesn't get much practice time during the week. So he's going to be rusty. He's not going to be on top of his game. Third down and a long 12.
first down. That's Carpenter. He's in there because he's very sure-handed. He has not fumbled in the last 80 handles. He's not fumbled this season. There's Lawrence Taylor. I'm sure still upset over what had to be an accident to Joe Theismann. You know, sometimes when the second string quarterback or the backup quarterback comes into the game, you may have a, a mishandled handoff. But to me, that last time John Riggins had control of that ball when he went into the line, OJ, just didn't put it away. Well, he was hitting the backfield and he was trying to stretch, I believe, for the first down and may have uh, stuck the ball out. Carpenter again. Gallops out over the 10-yard line. He's close to first down yardage near the 13-yard line. As Charles Mann is there defensively for the Redskins and Carpenter on a couple of carries gets the Giants out from the shadow of their own goalpost and they have a first down. It was interesting watching the Redskins on the sideline. Once Carpenter broke through there, they all left the sideline and went to the bench. Nothing is more demoralizing to a team when you have a team backed up and let them run right up the middle for a first down. Bill Parcells looking on. Giants have won four in a row. from Carpenter and Morris is out over the 20-yard line. Got a tremendous block from Carpenter and turns back in and collides with Malott, but not until he picks up about seven. Joe Morris is having a super year for him. He's a little over 700 yards right now, and as I stated before, the giant record is 1,182 yards, and he's on right on, on beam to break that single-season rushing record. Second and three, and that was Rob Carpenter again, and he will have another first down out near the 24-yard line. Giants recovered the fumble near their own three-yard line. Second consecutive first down, and Rob Carpenter has provided much of it. Carpenter only 108 yards coming into tonight, as Joe Morris has been handling most of the road work for the Giants this season. Morris tonight, 66 yards already five carries and of course he had that 56 yard touchdown run down goes Morris he was just buried in the backfield coming across the line of scrimmage Dean Hamill the rookie from Tulsa and the loss was back near the 20 yard line it'll be second down and 14 this is a down that Bill Parcells told us he anticipates the Redskins will come with the major blitz. The second and long yardage. Bill Sims deploys Bobby Johnson to the left, Lionel Manuel to the right. Giants looking for blitz, trying to go with the draw. Morris was buried by Dexter Manley at the line of scrimmage. It'll be third and 14, and we're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Channel 4, WTAE-TV, Pittsburgh. Frank Gifford, Joe Namath, O.J. Simpson. We're tied at seven, midway to the second period. The Giants and the Redskins. The Giants are looking over third down and 14. And Phil Sims, the quarterback for the Giants, will move from the shotgun. Meanwhile, the Redskins quarterback, Joe Theismann, has been taken to the hospital. We'll talk about that injury as soon as we get further word. It's Tony Galbraith gallops for about eight yards up near the 30-yard line. Far short of the first down, and out come the Giants kicking unit. Somewhat conservative call for the Giants on third down, needing about 14 yards, but that's the way they're going to play this game. When you have the type of defense that they have, number one in the NFL, see here, all you want to do is not make mistakes. Landetta on for the Giants. Ken Jenkins is back. Landetta's last punt was a 50-yard beauty. He's hammered another one. This time Jenkins will have time to attempt the return, and he bobbles it and has to cover at the 24-yard line. A 49-yard punt this time by Landetta. Hard-hitting football game, and tempers Flair once again. And once again, players are separated on the field. We'll be 20 to go here in the first half. Sims is 0 for 0 for 0. He had one completion. They brought it back on a penalty. He's been sacked three times. Jay Strader leading the Redskins now from their 23-yard line. And this is George Rogers. Rogers with first down yardage, or very close to it, 
at the 34-yard line, taken out of bounds by Terry Kennard, and the word is from the Redskins press people is that Charlie Taylor, he is their PR man, has told us that Joe Theismann on the way to the hospital, preliminary examination, it is a compound fracture of the leg. Well, if you're not with us earlier, Joe Theismann tackled by Lawrence Taylor as he was attempting to deliver the ball, has suffered a compound fracture of the leg. Rogers gets the first down, first and 10 at the 34-yard line. Rogers over the 35, to the 37, a gain of a couple. It'll be second down and eight. Somehow I get the feeling that Washington's playing a little more conservatively with Schrader in the game than they did with Joe. Well, judging by that first uh, pass that Schrader threw, I don't <laughs> yeah. think they really have to be conservative with this kid. He has quite an arm. But it is smart that they got George Rogers in the game because he does have the ability to break it. Normally when they have Riggins in the game, they're trying to wear you down. You're not going to wear this giant defensive team down. Second down and seven. Schrader, third round pick of a year ago from UCLA, only played two years at UCLA. He went into minor league baseball. As we see the ball bobbled by Rogers, who quickly covers it. It'll be third down and long, but Schrader signed a baseball contract with Toronto. Played in the Carolina League down there where he had the opportunity to try to bat against Dwight Gooden, the Cy Young Award winner for the Mets this year. And as Jay has put it, it helped both of our careers. It got me back in football, and it helped Dwight Gooden move on to realize his potential with the Mets. But he's not really that experienced, even in college. No, and, he, and he's rusty. That last handoff is an example of the rust. He faked the handoff and was late getting the ball back to the ball carrier. So I was fumbled. Third down and seven. Schrader gets away from Martin. And Schrader gets the first down. And Schrader, like Theismann, has mobility. And perhaps at a younger age, even more so. And he gets the first down for the Redskins, getting away from George Martin, a very agile pass rusher for the Giants. Sure, I think that comes from playing with Dijman because you would have taken that 10 off his jersey and put a 7 on his jersey. He would have looked like a young Dijman then. That's right. But most of the young fellas do find out that in the NFL, the quarterback should not be running the football. At least they won't run it for long. We Word saw some great the wise. With, yeah, we saw some great with the Terry Bradshaw and Roger Stallback. And even those gentlemen, toward the end of their careers, especially stopped carrying it upfield. With Mike Ditka, like Jim McMahon, he's off in a little bit. First and ten Redskins. We're tied at seven. And Strader goes to Art Muck once again. It gets the completion, but for only about a three-yard pickup. Close to the 48-yard line. Kenny Hill was there defensively for the Giants. Sure, Schrader didn't put enough heat on that ball. It didn't get out there quickly enough. That's why it was such a short gain. Had he gotten some more heat on it, got the ball out there more quickly, it would have gained more yardage. That's Jim McMahon of the Bears. They didn't need him yesterday. We're going to take a look at some of the action from the shutout of the Bears with the Cowboys yesterday. And Dick Schaaf is going to go down memory lane in the rivalry that has existed over the years between the Giants and the Redskins. Second down and six. Schrader, a little nervous, a little antsy, stays in there and throws it behind Muck. And a lot rusty, too. I keep saying that, but I promise you, these NFL quarterbacks, the backup fellas, really don't get a chance to work that much during the course of a week. Well, you know, we made that point early in the season when this uh, Redskins team was getting whacked, I think, by the uh, Cowboys, that we wondered why Theismann was still in the game late in the game and why they wouldn't put a kid like uh, Schrader in the game to get some experience in, and I think they're paying the price for that now. That's right. Third down and six. Schrader. Overthrows Art Muck, who was well covered. He tried to get it in. Muck had drawn double coverage. Patterson was back there. No question, he has a strong arm. <laughs> Good size at six foot four and two fourteen, and a strong arm. It's, uh, the mental part of this game is so vital, so important. That ovation was for Schrader when he came off the field. As we look at Steve Cox on to do the punting, and deep is Phil McConkey for the Giants. Cox had been with. 
Cleve in four years before the Redskins picked him up this season when they lost Jeff Hayes early in the season. Doesn't turn over, and McConkey makes the fair catch near the Giants' 17-yard line. 345 remaining in the first half. Bill Sims still to complete his first pass on the night. We'll be back doing you some very appropriate shots tonight with the talks that will affect perhaps our lives for generations beginning tomorrow in Geneva. And this is a look at the Lincoln Memorial from our camera that is located at the Washington Monument. Meanwhile, 345 remaining in the first half. The Giants and the Redskins are tied at seven. The Giants have a first and ten at their own 17-yard line. Bill Sims trying to get it to Byron Williams, and he was tripped up by Daryl Green. They were both playing the football, no flag. And Bill Sims is still looking for that first completion of the night. He's been sacked three times, but if you're going to use your speed, you're going to use it against Daryl Green, perhaps one of the fastest men in pro football today. That time you see their legs getting entangled, and down goes both players. Well, I guess they claim that uh, Daryl Green was looking back. It's a smart move. I guess any time you want to pass in a fear, the best thing to do is look back and throw your arm into the <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that looked like interference all the way there. That would have been a tough flag, but it certainly could have drawn one. And for the Giants, the second down and ten. Sims coming back again. And this time a great catch by Lionel Manuel. The Giants' leading receiver in only his second year, a free agent a year ago out of Pacific, and he comes down with a circus catch at the 42-yard line of the Redskins. This is a great catch. Again, working against Daryl Green. Green thought he had the interception. Look at that. One hands it, concentrates, spins his body so he doesn't land on the football, and he makes the completion. Bill Parcells was saying of the day he's a very quick kid. He's good down around the goal line, but he didn't read defense as well. This year he reads the coverage well, and consequently he's been very effective. On first down, Joe Morris. Joe Morris hit behind the line of scrimmage. Raphael Cherry, the rookie out of Hawaii, fighting off the block as Carpenter made a superb play. This yep. is, by the way, the Redskins' backup quarter, net quarterback now. That's Raphael Cherry. He was a quarterback at the University of Hawaii and a good one, a good athlete. He scrambled for a lot of yardage over there. But he would be the emergency quarterback should anything happen to the one they're using right now. That, of course, being Jay Schrader. Second down and 11. Flags are down. The Redskins across the line of scrimmage. Phil Sims has a cheap one. And he gets it to Lionel Manuel, who has first down yardage. Darrell Green made the hit on Lionel Manuel, but the Redskins are saying they were drawn offside. I think Joe Morrison may have started a little early. Oh, shit. Joe Morris, I believe, was the giant who moved forward, moved downfield, and as quickly as he did, Rich Malott turned upfield with him. Or Monty Coleman. Coleman was across the line of scrimmage, but Bill Morris had already turned up field. So it's walked off against the Giants. It's 2.09, and the Giants will be hard for us to get another playoff before the two-minute warning. The Giants have three timeouts. The Redskins have a pair. And they will not get this playoff. So the Giants have a second down and 16. The ball at the Redskins, 47-yard line. We'll be back. It's a Radio Shack Merry Christmas. This year, I needed to give a real family pleaser. Honey, please help me with this budget. How about a new game, Dad? Please. And I found it. Radio Shack's Color Computer 2. On sale for just $88. It entertains, educates, manages. It's expandable and affordable. Now that really pleases me. The Color Computer 2. Sale price for Christmas. Only at Radio Shack. Its time has come at last. A 4x4 that blazes a new trail for all-terrain vehicles. Its full-time four-wheel drive will climb mountains, ford rivers, and conquer the densest forest. But the most amazing thing of all, it's not 
a truck. It's the new Four Tracks 4x4, and it will take you almost anywhere. Four Tracks 4x4, only from Honda. special. Buy a Rio Niti Magnum and save $2 now. A great gift. Coming up, from sunny to sunny, from Mel to Yat, a trip down football's memory lane with Redskin and Giant heroes from the glory days. Dick Schaap takes a look at their lives, past and present, at halftime. I played in a few interesting games right here against the Redskins. The boy, during the 70s, under George Allen, they really dominated the Giants. That's when the Giants fans declared it a major rivalry, and the Redskins didn't even know it, I don't think. Second down and 16 for the Giants. Bill Sims gets the shot to Manuel, far short of the first down. It'll be third down and about 12. Giants in no big hurry, even though the clock is ticking down close to 140. They have three timeouts. Tony Galbraith comes in along with George Adams. Now, they are both good receivers for the Giants out of the backfield. Adams, a rookie from Kentucky, number 33. Galbraith, number 30. Chris goes low. Contact was made. <laughs> Extra Manley was pursuing Phil Sims. And old Phil, he's showing his smarts. He just kept on getting out of there. <laughs> good move, Phil. Get it on down the road. Call start, number 65. pretty difficult for the uh, center to have a false start. <laughs> well, he's had problems working with Phil Sims this year. We saw the fumble exchange when the Giants had the Cowboys beaten up in New York early in the year. They've had several of them, but we mentioned it to Bill Parcells today, and he glanced and said, don't bring it up. We've been doing fine for a few weeks. But how can you have the ball and false start? I say, as a quarterback, I used to worry. We'd go to the line of scrimmage, and sometimes my man John Schmidt would turn around and say, what's the count, Joe? I say, oh, my goodness. <laughs> and you had forgotten. Yeah, right. Third and 17. And now the Giants will call timeout. They're down to 119. And Phil Sims will move over to the sideline. Seth Knight, hard-hitting football game. In case you weren't with us earlier, Joe Theismann, compound fracture of the leg. Was taken to a hospital. This season most certainly ended, and you have to speculate about the future. He's 36 years old. A very severe injury. As on the sidelines, Bill Sims talking strategy. And in the middle of it, Bill Parcell. I'll never forget the first time I saw Joe Theismann play. It was against our old school, Frank, USC. And I think he threw, on a rainy day, he threw for over 500 yards. And, of course, that's just great years over the past three years. And if we look at Jay Schrader on the spot now, out of UCLA, where he only played a couple of years and only started a few games out there. In the nation's capital tonight, and in a week from tonight, we'll be in the city by the Golden Gate. O.J. Simpson's last spot his birthplace and we'll be watching the 49ers very much alive in that western division of the nfc going against the seattle seahawks very much alive in the afc western division giants have two timeouts they have a third down and 17 at the redskins 48 yard line bill sam steps inside the blitz and nailed at the 40 yard line by Dexter Manley and Mel Coffin. And beyond field goal range of Eric Schubert. So out comes Sean Landetta. <laughs> well, they ought to take a five-yard penalty here and use up most of the clock before they punt. Oh, I'm sure they're doing just that. Landetta is just going to let the 30-second clock tick down. He doesn't care whether he has five yards or not because he will be kicking in close in any event. Crowd isn't liking it, but they're not understanding the strategy. Landetta lets it all 
kick off that 30-second clock. They'll move the Giants back five yards, but meanwhile, 30 seconds has ticked off the clock, and the Redskins will have 32 seconds with which to work. And they have also wasted a timeout, so they only have two timeouts remaining. Delay a game called against the Giants. The Redskins declined the penalty. They would just as soon Landetta maybe kick it a little too far if he goes for the high kick and put it into the end zone and they'll get it on the 20. Yeah, but with Schrader in the game, I don't look for Washington to be trying any fancy stuff at this point. Nor do I, unless they should get a good return. This is Jenkins, and he is up into the 20-yard line. 24 seconds remaining in the half, and another fight breaks out on the field. Oh, this is getting silly. That's really a lack of discipline. That's sloppy. The Giants have not won here since 1981. Prior to that, they had not won all the way back to 1971. Frustrating years here in the nation's capital. The Giants, however, have won the last two games, both at Giants Stadium. They won earlier this year, four weeks ago, 17-3, and they won at home a year ago. Again, a reminder, Dick Schaap with a look at some of the memorable games that took place in this long-running series at halftime, and of course our highlight features. Jay Schrader. Kills the clock. Fiercest in all of pro football. It goes back a long way, and Dick Schaap now looks at some of the faces behind the feud. For 49 years, Washington Redskins have been pounding New York Giants and vice versa. And for 49 years, there have been Giants on both sides of the line. Some two dozen players gifted enough to be elected to the Pro Football Hall of Fame. One Hall of Famer worked both sides of the line, Sam Huff, who backed up the Giants line for eight years and the Redskins line for five. In Washington, Huff's Hall of Fame teammates included the Redskins' two greatest pass receivers, Charlie Taylor and Bobby Mitchell, both of whom still work for the team, Mitchell as an assistant general manager, Taylor as an assistant coach. In New York, Huff's Hall of Fame teammates included another brilliant offensive pair, the tackle Roosevelt Brown, number 79, and the frequent beneficiary of Brown's blocking, the halfback Frank Gifford, both of whom still study football. Brown is a scout for the Giants, Gifford as a familiar voice on Monday nights. Huff also broadcasts Redskin games and is a vice president of Marriott, the hotel chain, and still 21 years later will not forgive the giant coach, Ali Sherman, who shipped him to the Redskins. I took an oath when Sherman traded me down here that I would never rest, never rest until he got fired. I, I took an oath almost in blood uh, just to be traded from the Giants was the biggest hurt that I've ever had in my life, with the exception, of course, losing your mother and father to death. I'll never forget it, and I'll never forgive. On the other hand, Y.A. Tittle was delighted to be traded to the New York Giants from the San Francisco 49ers, for whom he played his final game, ironically, in an exhibition against the Giants. Tittle, now an insurance executive in Palo Alto, thought he was just terrific that day. They came in the tunnel, Going in the locker room, Sam Huff came up to me, my arch enemy that I just hated at that time. <laughs> said, Congratulations, Y.A., I'm, I want to be able to shake your hand first because Alex Sherman told us uh, uh, two minutes before the kickoff that he had made a trade for you, and if anybody touched you or hurt you, it would cost him $1,000. <laughs> As a giant, Tittle polished his Hall of Fame credentials, especially in a game against the Redskins, in which he threw for 505 yards and seven touchdowns. I don't know what happened. Why you can have such a day like this? Everything I throw, it will go for a touchdown. <laughs> Just seemed like everybody was wide open. Tittle's last year as a Giant was Sonny Jurgensen's first as a Redskin. On his way to the Hall of Fame, Jurgensen, who is still Sam Huff's teammate, broadcasting, led Washington to victory over the Giants in the highest scoring game in NFL history, 72 to 41. I got tired running on and off the field more than anything else. Jurgensen, Tittle, Huff. Great names, great players. But if any men symbolize the giant redskin rivalry, it is these two. Washington's Sammy Baugh and New York's Mel Hine. 
center and linebacker High never missed a game in 15 seasons, the longest career in Giant history. Was most valuable player in the NFL in 1938, the year he picked off this pass aimed at Don Hudson and led the Giants to the NFL championship, and made all pro eight straight years. He was a solid football player. He did everything well. He's smart, and uh, he's always the right spot all the time. Great person. Everybody loves Mel Herring. I think everybody on the other teams liked him. Quarterback and safety Baugh played 16 seasons. The Redskins record completed 70% of his passes one season, intercepted four passes in one game, and averaged more than 50 yards per punt one season. And he could do most anything in football. Oh, he was great. He was the greatest in our time. And of course, he made passing a go in professional football. Hine and Bohr are both charter members of the Pro Football Hall of Fame. During the nine years their careers overlapped in the 30s and 40s, either the Giants or the Redskins won the Eastern title every year. Their rivalry often punctuated by Redskin fans and the Redskin band marching up Broadway. It wasn't a grudge battle like it, you might like to think it would be. We got where we knew those players so well it was kind of, kind of like a homecoming when <laughs> we beat them. You know, we were always glad to play in New York. After years of supervising NFL officials, Hine, at 76, is now retired in San Clemente, California, once the home of another ex-football player. And it did. The Giants' front line was dropping back to form a wedge. The ball just dribbled the 10 yards and was quickly covered. And the Redskins, who have faked the punt on fourth down, to get the ball back. Harry Wilburn, the rookie from Mississippi. Now the Giants are dropping back to block for the kickoff. They don't even see this. And they wait until it goes 10 yards and they make the recovery. The Redskins have the ball here in the start of the second half. Jay Strader. Art Mark is open. A diving pass by Art Mark. Down close to the three-yard line, and Jay Strader hits Art Monk with a big bomb once again. That's the same play they've done to John secondary on in the first series, the very first pass that Strader threw. He simply runs a, a fly pattern down the sideline, and the safety on the inside doesn't get to that side of the field. He throws a strike, too. Beautifully thrown pass. It was zone coverage. Patterson was back there, but he was way off. One would begin to wonder when Mark Haynes, the three-time pro bowler, who held out much of the season but came back several weeks ago, is going to get back into this Giants lineup at cornerback. Patterson has played well, but he could have played that much better. First down goal to go. Play action by Strader. Strader tries to dive under a giant tackler, Harry Carson. He does that. But he could have been joining Feisman. He could have got a tremendous shot, but he is a good athlete. It really surprised me uh, almost as much as the New York Giants kick return team was that onside kick. Yesterday, Coach Schull and the Miami Dolphins pulled the same thing against Indianapolis and recovered it. I'm surprised the Giants got caught napping. And even more surprised that Jay Schrader didn't throw it away. He is the last viable Redskin quarterback. Second down, goal to go. Reagan hit behind the line of scrimmage. Byron Hunt made sure he did not get in. And it was close. A straighter trip block for Schrader. Schrader trip coming out from under the center. Joe, you mentioned this uh, uh, about the center, even though this was the guard. Jeff Bostic stepped on his foot. Yeah, there is another good example of his athletic ability. We've seen him run a couple times tonight. And we've seen him on target to Art Munt. The Redskins now. Third down goal to go. And they've marked it at the one-yard line. John Riggins did a tremendous job holding on to the football that last play. It was all the way down to his knees. Plus he was hit in the backfield. Yep. Third and one. Big opening, and Big John Reagan pulls it in. The Redskins have the lead again.
Well, Jim McGann, they like to do this with Joe Jacoby over there, OJ, but he's not in the game tonight. Well, they did a good job over there, especially Jeff Bostic, who is normally a center. He did a little loop around there, and he made a very nice block, and all Riggins had to do is stay true to the hole. Mosley routines the through. And the Redskins, with an onside kick to open the second half, have taken it in. They lead the Giants 14 to 7. Dave Craig leads the Seattle Seahawks against Joe Montana and the Super Bowl champion San Francisco 49ers. The matchup awaits on ABC's Monday Night Football. I won't ask you, Joe, if there's any one of those four you recognize. Hey, I did have a few uh, shaky dates earlier in my life, but I promise you, I don't believe I, I, I was out with any of them. They're proud of their title to Hogs here in the nation's capital. They have the lead back. Steve Cox drills one deep into the end zone. George Adams... Settled for the touchback, and the Giants will have a first and ten at the 20-yard line, and the Redskins' back crowd is really aroused. There is Schroeder, or Jay Schrader. Spells Schroeder, but pronounced Schrader. Third-round draft pick of a year ago. Played only a couple of years at UCLA. Brought off the bench tonight, and Joe Theismann was taken to the hospital with a compound fracture of the right leg. Bill Sims struggles through the first half. Morris is hit before he gets back to the line of scrimmage. Neil Okowitz playing with a very sore chest. The fluid from a deep bruise in the chest has gone down the right arm, and it was questionable whether or not he would go tonight. But he's been in there, and they need him a middle linebacker because when they don't have him, they take Rich Mallott away from the weak side put him in middle linebacker, and they bring in Monty Coleman. Second down and nine. Sims gets the to ball to Morris underneath, and he's held short of the first down to the 28. It'll be third down and three. Let's take a look at the numbers from the first quarter, and then we will wipe them out and give you the first half stats yardage, minus 28. That was because of three sacks of Phil Sims. Now we'll take a look at the halftime numbers. Did not improve all that dramatically. But we were tied at the half, and then the Redskins with that onside kick, they took it all the way down the field, and they now lead 14 to 7. Third down and a long two. Blitz is on Sims. He gets it out there to Galbraith. Galvis is piled up at the 30-yard line. It'll be close to the first down, and Galbraith, I think, on the surge, will have a Giants first down. Galbraith, the all-time leading receiver out of the backfield with his 418th reception, but he's going to have to watch Walter Payton. Payton now has 410. last play, Washington came with an all-out blitz, and Charles Mann, who plays a defensive end position, normally isn't in the pass coverage, but that was his assignment, that last play, and he did a good job. However, the Giants did pick up the first down. Giants, by the way, had 109 yards of offense. That's the least they've been able to work in a first half thus far this season, dating back to Green Bay, when they had 129 in the first half, and I think O.J. touched on it earlier. They just don't play that well on the natural surface. First and ten, and wide open is the tight end, Bavaro, the rookie from Notre Dame, and he rumbles all the way down to the Redskins 42. Well, they're beginning to play better on uh, natural grass. It's strange, though, when you think about it. Uh, in the last 13 games that they've played, only one have been on natural grass, and that's the game they had 129 yards in the first half and incidentally lost it to Green Bay, as we see just a quick out by Bavaro. Evidently, Joe, it must have been some miscoverage because no one was out there with him. That was a miscoverage. You know, a couple of weeks ago, Bavaro caught 12 passes to tie an all-time Giant record. The first player that ever caught 12 passes for the Giants was one Frank Gifford back in 1957. On first and ten, Morris oh, with an open field, and he's gone again, maybe. Vernon Dean is pursuing, and he will not get Morris, who went 56 yards in the first half. This time he goes 41 yards, and the Giants are within one of tying it once again. Deja vu in the first half. The Redskins took a 7 nothing lead. Morris erupted on a 56-yard touchdown run. He has now gone 41 after the Redskins open the scoring here in the second half to put the Giants to within one. He gets a lead block from Carpenter, number 26. 
And the rest of it is just a sprint to the corner. You got a great trap from Chris Godfrey, number 61. And here's a little guy. I call him little because he's only 5'7". He got his first start last year against this uh, Washington team. And in that game, he rushed for three touchdowns, which was a ties a giant record for rushing touchdowns. Rutledge having a bit of a problem, but gets it down. Schubert gets it through. We're tied up. And Morris is over 100 yards for the game tonight. Morris now for the season up around 750 yards heading for a thousand yard season 10 touchdowns Giants set to kick off now Eric Schubert one of the reasons he's around after Ali Haji Sheik was hurt they brought in just Atkinson he couldn't get it into the end zone but Eric Schubert can Ken Jenkins waits for it it's a high kick that Jenkins takes at the two Jenkins finds an opening. He's out over the 30 to the 33-yard line. A 31-yard return. A flag is down back at the 20-yard line. And a good effort by Jenkins could be reduced considerably. Referee once again tonight, Fred Wyant. Illegal block in the back, number 59. First down. And so the effort by Jenkins will be shortened up considerably. Chris Keating with an illegal block for the Redskins. 10.56 remaining here in the third quarter. We're tied at 14. The Redskins desperately need a win tonight. They are 5-5 five and five on the season. A win tonight, and there'd be one game behind the Giants and the Cowboys. The Giants, however, with a win tonight, will take a one-game lead over the Cowboys. Philadelphia is at 6-5. and five. So the Redskins with a win tonight would not only help their own purposes, but they would really help the Philadelphia Eagles. Giants looking to win their fifth in a row. They haven't done that since 1970 when Alex Webster was the coach. On first down, Raider hit Byron Hunt right in the stomach. Will they rid him when they look at the movies on Tuesday? <laughs> That's only if they win the game will they rip him. If they lose the game, they may not even talk to him. His eyeballs were rolling end zone, end zone, end zone. Let's take a look at him in the end zone. He hit Byron Hunt right in the stomach. <laughs> we'll remember that for a long time. Second down and 10. Didier on the move. This is Keith Griffin. And Griffin hit first by Gary Reasons and then just buried. It'll be third down and long for Jay Schrader. Looks over to the sidelines to pick up the play. In third down and seven. In defense of Schrader's pass the last time, uh, Don Warren, number 85, had run a hook pattern. He was going to slide out, and he fell down right as Schrader was throwing the ball. And Byron Hunt had run a perfect pattern. <laughs> Marshall gets the straighter, but he gets the ball to Griffin. And Griffin out over the 30-yard line. A Redskin first down, and that was a great play by Schrader. Leonard Marshall was right in his face. He had to go up high to deliver the ball. All right, well, what they're doing is they're running a screen pass to the left side here, and you see Marshall come from the outside to the left of the screen, and his whole area to the left by the 10-yard line is wide open. The two offensive linemen get out there smartly. And Lee Griffin for a nice game. Keith Griffin. They use him like Joe Washington was used here for several years. He's a good running back. He had 164 yards against Atlanta a couple of weeks ago, but he's a good receiver. And he has given the Redskins a first down at their own 33-yard line. Reagan turns back into a lot of trouble. The ball is loose again. Reason put the hit on Reagan, who tossed it up once again as Kenny Hill covers. That's the second fumble of the night, the second lost fumble by Reagan. And the Skins had, well, they didn't lose a fumble for the last four games. Normally, they hold on to that football, especially John Riggins. Gary Reasons was a hitter. Riggins a hitty. And Kenny Hill made the recovery. The Giants. Tied at 14 with the Redskins. 9-15 remaining in the third quarter. First down at the Redskins, 33-yard line. Joe Morris, right side. 
And good judgment. The better part of Valor. Morris checks out with about an eight-yard pickup. It'll be second down and two. And let's take a look at Riggins again. You watch 55 of the Giants put the hit on him. This is a play they run a hundred times. The ball is placed in there perfectly. Riggins carrying the ball the way he normally would carry the ball. But when he's hit by number 55, the helmet hit the ball, and the ball came right out. I'm a little surprised. I see George Rogers on the bench. Maybe something is wrong with him, but I'm a little surprised George is not playing. Morris and Carson are the setbacks for the Giants. Second down and two. Morris spins and twists and tries to get the first down, and he'll be very close. Tom Beasley in there defensively now for the Redskins. In on that stop. You know, sometimes you have to give the defensive players credit. Gary Reasons did a tremendous job of causing John Riggins to fumble that ball. He put that headgear right in there, right on the football, and knocked it loose. I don't know what's with this guy. Once again, I told you, you're not going to wear this giant team down running, and normally that's when Riggins is at his best, when you're trying to wear the defense down. That's an amazing stat. They have not stopped a third and one all year. Carson, number 44, is a good blocker. This time he's... It's the running back, and this time the Redskins will get their first stop of a third and one situation all year long. And the Giants now have a decision time. They can go for the field goal and the lead, or they can go on first down, fourth down in what appears to be less than a yard. Now we go back to that play when Frank said it, discretion was a better part of valor uh, by, the, by the runner, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, by Joe Morris. Joe Morris, sometimes you'll run out of bounds and use discretion if you already have a first down. But when you run eight yards and you got two yards for the first down, sometimes you should go for that first down. Bill Parcells elects to go. Fourth down, just a little less than a yard. Carson and Morris with a setback. Morris, he won't get it. Of such plays, our games turned around. Martells gave it a shot. He's unhappy. But credit a fine defensive effort by the heart of that Redskins defense. And that defense is playing hurt tonight. Well, no one has more respect for little Joe Morris than I have. But on that first down play, after you get eight yards, you should try to get the first down, especially on this part of the field. The Redskins get it back. They have it at their own 23-yard line. First and 10. We're midway through the third quarter, and we're tied at 14. 7.34 remaining in the third quarter. The Giants and the Redskins were tied at 14. Hard-hitting game. Bitter rivalry between these two teams. On first and 10, Slater. And the ball is lost by George Rogers. And the Giants are saying they got it again. And indeed they do. George Rogers this time coughs it up. John Riggins has given it up twice tonight, and the Redskins have not fumbled in weeks. Terry Williams covers for the Giants. Well, they haven't played against the defense like the Giants in weeks, and as we said earlier, the Giants are a team that will beat you up. As the game goes on, they'll wear their opponents down when you got linebackers like Byron Hunt weighing 242 and Reason at 235, and of course Lawrence Taylor and Harry Carson, well, hey, they'll soften you up for later on in the First game. First and 10, the Giants at the 23-yard line. Morris gets outside once again and turns on the speed. Morris down close to the 10-yard line, a gain of seven. It'll be second down and three. We're going to pause five seconds and allow our stations to identify themselves. Channel 4, WTAE-TV, Pittsburgh. The Giants and the Redskins. They're tied in the third quarter at 14. The Redskins open the scoring. Seisman, who later left to the, go to the hospital to be looked at, it was determined he had a compound fracture of the right leg. He's out of it. The Giants came back to tie it up. Joe Morris, 56-yard touchdown. John Riggins took it in from one yard out. Morris again on 41-yard touchdown run. Now the Giants with a second and three inside Redskin territory. And wide open is Morris out of the backfield. He'll have a Giants first down at the nine-yard line. Hit there by Raphael Terry. Joe Morris having a tremendous night for the Giants. He has run one in from 56 yards out, one from 41 yards out, well over 100 yards, and well on his way to a 1,000-yard season. Carson, 44, who blocked for Herschel Walker for three years with the New Jersey Generals, is in there now with Joe Morris. 
And that was Carson with a blistering block to squeeze Morris into the end zone. Carson leveled a redskin. Morris turned it inside, scores his third touchdown of the night from eight yards out. That was an excellent block by Carson, but even if he hadn't got the block, he got a, you really got to admire Joe Morris. I like the way he runs when he makes up his mind to get upfield. Watch, he just takes off. He's not looking for anything. He knows where he's supposed to go. He sees it already, and bingo, he's right upfield. Carson leveled Malat. Malat is 6'4", 237. That was a pretty good lick Carson yes. put on him. The Giants have retaken the lead. Eric Schubert. The storied one who was teaching school three weeks ago when the Giants needed a field goal kicker. They had looked at him in the summer. They had cut him. They brought him back, and he hasn't missed since they brought him back. 